Hi everybody, my name is Timothy Trespass and I am a targeted individual. I'd like to talk to you for a minute about suicide notes. Now, frequently when people decide to kill themselves, they write a note. Why? Well, sometimes they write a note because they want to hurt the people that they're killing themselves over. I'll show them. Or sometimes they write a note because they want their loved ones to know why they killed themselves because they didn't talk with them about it. Or sometimes they write a note in a desperate attempt to let the world know that they were hurting so much that they killed themselves. Um, you know, I wrote suicide notes. For me, they were goodbye letters. Uh, I was in a terrible state. I couldn't stop crying and hyperventilating, freaking out, and I was going to hang myself. I had the rope, I made the noose, I was uh, going to hang myself. So I sat down to write the suicide letters, notes, whatever, and I went through my life and I wrote a note to each of the people in my life that I thought would care. And uh, you know, I wrote to my adoptive parents and my sister. I wrote to uh, my ex-friend X. And I wrote to uh, the nice people that used to care for me when I was in high school now don't seem to want anything to do with me because my nice friend X told them I was insane or something. And I wrote to, uh... Jeez, I don't even know who I wrote to now. Now that I think about it, but... You know, my birth mother... Um, Petra. And I carried these notes around in my pocket for about a month each in an envelope with a stamp sealed in a, in a, you know, with the address so they could be mailed or whatever, you know. Um, I didn't kill myself that moment because when I turned off the lights and I put the noose around my neck and was about to do the deed, uh, Petra woke up and said, what are you doing? And of course, I was didn't want to burden her. <laughs> you know, I realized. It. So, so that was done with. The notes, the suicide notes. Here we are, three years later. The notes I threw them up. I ripped them up. I threw them out. But I've realized something. In the time that has passed since then, most of the people that I wrote those notes to really didn't give a shit. They don't care now, they didn't care then, and if they ever cared, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, this friend X, this guy, uh, he was a very close friend for a number of years. I considered him my best friend. I thought we were partners, business and life, whatever, you know. But <laughs> what a fool I was. Um, oh, it's such a long story, but... I guess the moral of the story is that that people that you think care about you can turn out to be nothing. You know, nothing, nothing, nothing more than nothing more than everybody else, you know. You see, my 
Why? You know, I don't even know how to explain this. It's like... I don't know how many of us there are. People like me. And you. Who have uncovered realities in their lives that show them that uh, things were not the way they thought they were. Life was not the way they thought they were. People were not who they thought they were. I wasn't who I thought I was. And you realize that uh, you're hurt, people are hurting you, and you can't find much quarter, solace, respite, assistance, love, care, protection, safety, validation, comfort, reassurance. And um, the harder things get, the less people care because they're so busy caring about themselves. And we have to care about ourselves, you know? If we don't care about ourselves, what do we have? And this is something Petra and I argue about because. <clears throat> I somehow feel that, you know, if you, uh, <coughs> excuse me, if you give all that you have to help another or to help others, and you have nothing, who's supposed to help you? The other? God is supposed to help you. Supposedly that was the promise that he made to us somewhere, but... Maybe not. You know, what do I know? And she argues with me that yes, that's all fine and dandy, but if you don't have enough to care for yourself, then you cannot care for anyone else. I don't know where this is going. Uh, I'm lost. Another example of... Uh, You know, it's not that I'm stupid, it's not that I'm forgetful, it's not that I'm right at the moment where I lost my train of thought, I heard, you know, so you detect these slight changes in variance in not so much tone, but level or, or a phase, a t a timbre, something, a slight change. And, you know, I know you look at me you're like, wow, this kid's mucked up and his brain is probably a wreck or whatever, and I'm sure it is. Mark Gellin's is hell, microwaves are cooking my ass, but, uh, I think the reason why they chose high functioning people for some of this is because it, it's you can do it longer and you get more more information. You know, when you take somebody who's highly intelligent, highly creative, thoughtful, artistic, you know, sensitive and you tear them apart bit by bit by bit by bit each bit that you get will be more interesting than if you choose somebody with less bits to tear apart. You know what I mean? There's more data, there's more bandwidth, there's more range. And, um, there's so many examples of this thing and make it so I can't think anymore. 
anytime I try to do much of anything. So, thanks for watching.